Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Yep, it's the world's most dangerous morning show, The Breakfast Club. Uh, Charlemagne the God, I don't know where Angela and Envy at. Go get my guy some cups, man. He got an album out today, man. Oh, man. Uh, my man Russ is here. Yes. To talk Chomp 2. What's up, my brother? Can't complain, man. Living the dream. Explain the title Chomp for me. I think I know what it means. It really was about like the texture of just the energy, just chomping on beasts. It wasn't really well thought out at all. Really? <laughs> no. Oh, so it's not like I'm eating MCs and no... Nah, it was really just like kind of a term that I would use just like in the studio, like when I was on that type of time, like, oh, I'm about to just chomp on this beat real quick. That mm -hmm. was really it. And then fans started saying like, Oh, I think it stands for can't hate on my pen. I was like, no, <laughs> it does not stand for that. But it can if you want. I mean, Why did it need a sequel? I wanted to do a, a proper like full length thing because I, I wanted to drive the point home that I could wrap my ass off. That's what this feels like. This album is very, 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 very hip hop. That's that's the yeah. first thing I thought when I when I when I gave it a first listen. I'm like, wow, you know, certain certain shit. Come on, you be like. Right, right. Damn. Okay, Russ. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I want to name some some features you have on the album. I want to name some rappers because you got some of the best lyricists. Yeah, and I ever know, on I there. know your favorite is what Ghostface. My, Ghostface, right? my favorite. Yeah, yeah. And I want you to tell me what made you want to go toe to toe with some of these people. I mm -hmm. name Jay Electronica. Come on, that's like he's an alien. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's been one of my favorite rappers for a decade. Um, and Chomp is just like even why I did a sequel. Because I wanted to make it clear to people that when you see Chomp, this whole brand is about, this is the closest I can get to playing one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like, So I'm trying, I like, I play basketball. I know you can't tell by my, you know, height. six, eight height. <laughs> <laughs> but um, nah, it's like, I try to, I want to play one-on-one. -on -one. Like put a beat on and rap. That's a, I never thought about that. that this is the closest I can get to playing one-on-one. -on -one. So you're not intimidated at all. And one no. thing I do notice though, you do rap first on a lot of, a lot of the. Records. That's just because that's how the song was. Okay. You know okay. what I mean? Like because everyone that I, uh, every song I sent out, my verse was already on it, so they all heard my verse first, and I didn't change any verses. So I know I was kind of like consciously thinking of like, damn, I don't want to come first on every song, but it just worked out like that. Um, Papoose. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, play one on one. Rap, <laughs> let's rap, let's hoop. Was it something you saw? Something you saw him doing recently? I know he's been getting busy on. He's just crazy. I've just been a fan of his pen for a long time. That's just like once again, Chomp was appreciated. Chomp was um, it's one of those things where it's like, who do y'all think is the best rappers out in the world? And I'm trying to play one on one against them. Like Chomp one had Black Thought. You feel yeah. me? Yeah. Jadakiss. I mean, Jadakiss is insane. I've never heard a bad Jadakiss verse in my life. The thing I'm most impressed by is like you didn't get lost on none of these records. Though. Talk about it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Talk about it. Did you change any verses? Nah. You said, wow, so even after you sent your verse first. And I, and I feel like I bodied damn near everyone. I feel like I only got got a couple God, times. Now, Russ, you ain't got to say body. I love, see, that's why, that's why that's people love you. That's how I you. feel. That's why people love you and hate you. That's how I the feel. The confidence. You yeah. should. I, I'm not... I'm not, it's like, I'm not I, disputing it. I love all of them, and I love all their verses, but of course I'm going to feel like I bodied everyone. But there's some ones that I feel like I got got on, like Crit got me. Oh, uh, Crit got busy. Yeah, Crit got me. I think Ransom might have got me. Ransom got busy. Ransom. So do, do you order the song? That's a good, great point. Do you order the songs based on who you think just got busy on a record? Because Ransom's like the second song on the album, right? Yeah. So, no, nah, it was really like Sonics. That's when like that was a real actual like – sonic intention mm -hmm. to like let me make sure it also flows and it's not just it doesn't just feel like a complete playlist you know you got my favorite rapper of all time on there ghostface come on wu-tang man it's crazy i wanted to get raekwon on it too what happened uh i hit him too late like he was on tour and he was like i can get it in like 16 days when i'm back but i was like fuck that was i'm be honest with you that would scare me to send any of those guys a song with my verse already on it yeah, but see, like, I'm going into it, like, all right, I got to write my best verse every time. So that's why I didn't change anything, because I'm like, nah, this, I stand by this. I worked, mm -hmm. you know, I spent mad long on my verses, you know what I mean? And it's not even just the lyricists, it's the producers. You know what Come I'm saying? On. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to name some producers. You tell me what made you want that production. Got to start with the almighty premiere. 
Yeah, he was on the first one, and it's like, it's not a classic if Primo's not on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was your favorite Primo records, you know, coming up that made you, like, fall in love with that I love the sound? shit he did with Biggie. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, what, Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, Kicking the Door. All that shit. I just like that commandments. grit. I like the gritty, like, just rap. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What about uh, High Tech? High Tech is so crazy to me, like. And underrated. Yeah, super underrated. But, like, I love the stuff he did with Game. That's why that was really cool for me to put them kind of back together, you know? But High Tech is crazy. You went and got one of the most underrated producers who people don't talk about enough. Bink. Bink. Come on. I knew you were going to say it. Bink. Come on. That's 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 Jay-Z shit. Yeah, he provided yeah. a lot of the blueprint. People don't talk yeah. about Bink. They talk about Blade. They talk about Ye. They don't talk about Bink. Nah, Bink is crazy. How did you, So you recognize that early. Yeah, well, young. I'm a producer, too. So, okay. like, I have producer heroes mm-hmm. you know so he was one of the ones that i once again i had no relationship with him prior same with high tech but shot the shot in the dm just hoping that they'd hit me back and worked out what static selector static was going to be on the first one we couldn't get it in time he's another one who i'm just like you're a classic producer mm-hmm. that's really like because the whole thing is who do y'all think i can't rap with and who do y'all think beats i can't rap over <laughs> Name them, you who, know. That was the whole kind of point. Who 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 are you listening to now, Russ? Not not artist wise. I'm talking about just in general. That because I feel like you're always talking to somebody when you're mm. creating music. I feel like you're in the studio proving a point to someone. Who is that imaginary someone? Or like the imaginary opponent? Yeah, the, probably the industry. Honestly, the industry. Just like. I know the perception of me is like, oh, yeah, he does the melody thing. But it's like, no, I really rap like mm-hmm. when I want to. And that was that was a driving force of like, no, nah, I'm about to show people what's up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I saw I saw some article. I forgot where it was. And it was like, this is a late contender for rap album of the year. Easily rap album of the year, in my opinion. Objectively speaking, I was talking with someone about it in the media. It's like, name another rap album that has as many high quality raps and as many classic productions on it this year. I can't name, I can't name a rap album that has as many good verses as Chomp Two has. Well, I mean, what I like about Chomp Two is it's a very intentional hip hop album. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Like I'm not trying to do nothing but hip hop. You're gonna get these bars and these yeah. hard beats. And it was crazy because it was like you said, it's like law of least effort. You know, I wasn't trying to do anything commercial, and it seems like this is the most critically acclaimed thing I've done. Mm-hmm. And it's only been out for two or three days, and it's like wow. When you try the least, <laughs> it works out, you know? But when you're independent, you can do that anyway, though. It's like... Yeah. Uh, by, by the way, I don't know why artists just don't do that, period. Now, just make the kind of music you want to make. Yeah, well, like, I like making hits and that type of stuff, too. But what I learned with hip-hop is that they're not going to give you what I'm going for. Like, I want to be in the conversation of best rappers out. They're mm-hmm. not going to give that to me. Just I don't care how many plaques I get. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many hits I put out. They're only going to give it to me via rapping. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I saw you tweet that. Uh, this re- I saw you tweet that this is this, the albums aren't about numbers. So it's this like, one's not about yeah no, okay. and that's what was so crazy that that tweet or whatever it's charting in ninety different countries. I'm like, what? Wow. Off of just like bars and classic, you know what I mean? Like, I would have thought that I would I had to do hits and all these melodies. It's like, damn, this is actually really, uh, r- just confirming to me that okay, you can just really rap your ass off 14 times over some hip-hop shit and people love it, you know? I also just think it restores a bit of a, it's a balance. There's so much, like, when I'm looking at, like, iTunes charts and stuff like that, I'm looking at all the songs, I'm like, everything just sounds like a a chase of a hit. It just sounds like we're all hit chasing. Like, Mm -hmm. everything's a melody, everything's... I'm like, man, just Chomp 2 being out in the world and and being in the, you know, back into the infrastructure of rap and music, it's like, man, this is needed. Someone had to, like, come and do this from a mainstream level. I know Mm -hmm. there's people that do it, but I think it's cool for me to do it from a mainstream level because it's like, let's provide some balance into the game. Like, in two weeks, I'll come back with some melody shit too, but, like, can we at least have something out there from a mainstream artist that's, you know, just hip-hop? So, so you don't care about like sales no more at all? No, that's why I put it out on a Wednesday. Wow. Because I refuse to play y'all's game. I had this epiphany with myself. I'm like, if I'm independent, act like it. Mm. 
if I'm independent, why would I do what major label artists are doing? Why mm-hmm. would I play on Fridays? That's when y'all play. I don't want to play with y'all. Mm-hmm. Fuck y'all. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know? So. What made you get to that? Just this epiphany of like, I'm independent. <laughs> you feel me? I mean, why, why is it just hitting you now? Like, you I don't know. Millions I, of like, dollars. Well, because I had like, I think I was still like one foot in, one foot out. Mm-hmm. You know, where I was like, okay, I'm indie, but I still want to like play the game. And, and then I just woke up when it was like recently, I was like, dog, why am I trying to play the game that I denounce? That I, like, let me play my own game. I don't know. It just like dawned on me. I wonder if it's because you've had so much success independently, made mad money, you've seen you buy yourself a house, your mom's house, all of this good stuff, but then you still don't get mentioned. Yeah, it it, it is came, that it. It came from a frustration, uh, and I think like a a very low vibration is confusion. Mm. And I was very confused. I was angry, which caused confusion. And I was like, "This is not the wave." And I was like, "All right." What am I angry about? Oh, not getting the recognition. And why doesn't the industry fuck with me? Dog, the industry doesn't fuck with you because you don't fuck with the industry. Why? Well, I, I can't expect the industry to champion me when my narrative is a direct threat to the industry itself. That's a fact. So it's almost like, it's almost like, uh, fuck the Breakfast Club. Yo, why, is, why, why can't I get a Breakfast Club interview? I would say fuck the Breakfast Club because they keep doing you dirty. Nah, you come up here. <laughs> they do, but it's like, I'm like, damn, this is the second time. I'm like, y'all gonna do rough like that again? Yeah, nah, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> I talked I to Envy on the phone. It's I can all... understand why you would say fuck the Breakfast no, but you, Club. No, you know what I mean. It's like I can't be surprised that I don't get championed by the industry and get certain industry looks, whether it's magazine covers and stuff like that, awards like come to this event. I can't be surprised I don't get that type of stuff because I don't fuck with the industry. Yeah, I like what you said about, you know, your narrative is a direct threat to the industry because if uh-huh. artists start going independent, what the, the, <laughs> it's, it's exactly. Dead. Imagine like imagine Drake, Kendrick and Cole and Kanye indie. By the way, they 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 could do that. They, they don't could, need it. They could easily do it. It's like but that's what I'm saying. Me winning is in the music business least interest. You know what I mean? Like, it benefits them, not at all. Is there anything you see the majors doing that you'd be like, you know what, I wish I could do that. Like, I'm not capable of doing that. Mm, Not capable. Uh, I think there's always, what what I'm trying to provide is, is an alternative way to win. And I think there's a lot of different ways to skin a cat. You know what I mean? Like I think you can win on a lot of different ways. Peter, don't come at me. It was just a it was just a thing, Peter. You got a big ass fur on, Russ. It's fine. a fake fur. It's faux fur. <laughs> I think. But it costs mad money for faux fur. What's the deal? <laughs> yeah, but um I think there's a lot of different ways to win. That's what I'm trying to provide. I don't know if there's anything I can't do, Indy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I I know you uh been looking at signing artists too. Yes. Yep. We did sign an artist. Word. Yeah. Is it who You're going to love who I sign. You want, is it who I'm thinking of? Go ahead, say it. La Russell? Yep. Wow. That's the next guy, man. I'm nah, he's y'all. phenomenal. He's insane. He's phenomenal. He, he, what, what made you want to... I mean, I noticed it because I said, Russ is always liking La Russell stuff. He's paying attention to yeah. La Russell. It was really just his name. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Russ and LaRussell. Nah, he, like, I love raps. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like, I I feel like if you can rap your ass off and you can do it in a digestible, conversational way and the content is super potent, you could throw you could throw those verses in between a melody and catch plaques if that's what you want. Mm-hmm. But I think the foundation of just being an ill rapper has to be there, you know? Like when I think of like the goats, everyone can rap. Cole, Kendrick, Drake, they can all rap. So it was a no brainer for me. What What did you offer him that you think? Because I know there was other people definitely caught in him. So what did you offer him that you think others? Freedom, couldn't? freedom. To be honest, like do whatever you want. I just my whole thing is like labels, whatever. Like they just got to get out of the way. Give the artist some money and get out of the way. So that's why I told him. I'm like, look, I'm not here to really tell you how to do anything. I'm here to just be a resource. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Here's some money. Call me when you need me. And like, do your thing. I'll get out of the way. You own your masters, all that. Like, (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know, that's all labels need. Like, 
Labels need to understand that they're a bank with connections. But you don't need to own someone's masters just because of that. That's real. Yeah. Damn, I never thought you're a bank with connections, but you don't need to own somebody's masters because of that. That is true, because it's like, you're, I'm giving you a loan that's recoupable anyway, so why should I own your intellectual property no, forever for that? it's just greed. It's yeah. pure greed, and it's like, it's not even a guarantee they can do shit for you. Like, what I told the Russell is like, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, oh, I can, you know, come fuck with me. I can get you on this playlist. I can get you in this. Ra-. I Labels can't even make that guarantee. You feel me? Because you can still get told no from Spotify and Apple, even as a label. My whole thing was like, look, I know what you need because you remind me of myself. You just literally need money and time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And peace of mind. And like being a little bit more financially free gives you more peace of mind, gives you you know, make make money to make music. Don't make music to make money type of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like you just need the money to sort of breathe and make music. But I, I don't need to do anything other than get out of the way and look, when you want to to like do something, to put out the album, da 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 then we can use our resources and roll it out and do up. But it's really like, dog, give me some money and move. Right, 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 <laughs> you know right. what I mean? I'll let you know when I need you. Why you, I, put, why you didn't put him on Chomp too? See, he's going to be mad you even asked that because we, me and him were texting about that because he wanted to be on Chomp too. The reason why is because Chomp is about out-rapping who y'all think are the greatest rappers. So, okay, so he hasn't, pr- the public doesn't know out, he's one of the great shit. Me playing one-on-one with Little Russell isn't a thing to the world. Yeah, You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Me playing it. one-on-one with Black Thought is like, whoa, Russ out rap, which I didn't. I get it. Black Thought washed me, but yeah. He watches everybody. Yeah, yeah but I've person. but but I've thought of doing like a chomp where it's like some of the more like slept on people. You know what I mean? Like have Corday and Jid on there and yeah. stuff like that. But I'm trying to I'm trying to rap with the legends. How do you how do you think this particular album made you better? I'm in a rap bag. You know what I mean? Like it made me just push my pen. To be honest, like I'm feeling like. I'm feeling like I can out rap anyone, you know? And I don't like I always kind of felt like that, but kind of getting the um getting just the approval, I guess, from from people that I really looked up to, like, yo, nah, like you actually went crazy. Cause, you know, like I said, Papoose, a lot of these people I didn't have relationships with. Mm-hmm. I just hit them on a DM. So like Papoose, I didn't know. Uh uh Ghostface, I didn't really know. Um the game I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, for y'all to be down and then for y'all to also be like, yo, like, you actually went crazy. It's just like, man, come on. You, you have a lyric that I love, man. And I know it's a great lyric because I'm already planning to say it later. <laughs> I've accepted apologies. I'm, I'm still, still waiting old. on. I'm still old. Yeah. That's, That's hard, yo. I appreciate that. That's a fact, though. Sometimes you just have to be like, you know what? I'm accepting the fact you're never going to apologize. <laughs> you feel me? Like, and I'll take that for what it is. Or just accepting what a person, like when a person did you wrong, just accepting, hey, the person did me wrong. That's what I'm saying. It's like just forgiveness. Like, just, I forgive you. Yeah, move on. Because even if they're never going to apologize, it's like, so what are you going to do? Walk around and harbor this resentment for them? You know, easier said than done. Was there a particular situation that 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 created that line? There was a, yeah, there's been a couple. There's been a couple where like, I think things can really, like, irritate your soul if you don't let them go. And so there's been, like, situations where how are you going to do that and not at least say sorry, whether it's with women or mm-hmm. whatever it is. And it's like, all right, but if you walk around harboring that energy, I just feel like it's a negative space to kind of vibrate in. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, man, let that go. One thing I like about you, man, it feels like you channel your, whether, whether it's anger yeah. Whatever it is, you channel it into what into productive things. You I don't agree because you don't you don't come off as a bitter person. I appreciate that. I feel like some people when I was at the beginning of my career, some people thought I was bitter, mm-hmm. which I understand because I I don't think people get the fact that look when you're trying to get on for ten years, you know, or eight at that point, and. I had DM'd and emailed, not even DM'd, it wasn't even out like that, emailed the writers at Pigeons and Planes and emailed Complex and Pitchfork 100 emails a day and not getting any headway, not making any progress. It's like, of course, at the very beginning when I get on, I'm on some fuck y'all, I told y'all shit, Mm -hmm. right? 
And so I, I get how that could come off bitter, but to be honest, like I also don't really resonate with the mindset of, oh, you should just be happy to be here. I am happy to be here, but people use that to sort of dismiss you. It's like gaslighting a little bit. Like, mm. just be happy to be here. Like, no, I want to own my shit. I want to, like, don't tell me just, you should just be here. Like, fuck you. <laughs> and also, you didn't invite me here. Yeah, I had to bust it. That's why I said on fucking, <laughs> whatever that song was on Chomp, where I said, uh, I wasn't invited, so I threw my own party. Mm-hmm. It's like, if it was up to the industry, I still wouldn't be on. Mm-hmm. I had I busted down the door. Like, the door didn't open, so I went in through the window. That's why I said All that. Right. A lot of my whole, like, that's like a, a big thing for me, a big message that I want to get across to people is like, look, if the if opportunity doesn't knock, build the door. You feel me? Or going through the window. Like, I'm not waiting on you. I'm busting this shit down. Did any of those early fuck yous, did they come back to, to, to bite you now? Yeah, I mean, like, I never expect Complex or XXL to, like, uh, Russ is one of the best rappers out. Because I said fuck Complex and fuck XXL. So, I'm like, that's one of those things where mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm not surprised they don't, you know, show the love that I think they should. What? Dog, you came out here and said fuck them. <laughs> but it's worth a conversation, though. I mean, because I'm open to everything. I think people are just really. Um, I'm sub- once again, Chomp, Chomp Two is just my life, bro. You feel me? Like just the bar, like grown grown men and women acting like they're still in tenth grade. I don't care what your friends say. I'm legendary. It's like this industry is high school. People right really up. like that's the first song. Yeah, it's like people really just clicked up and moved and no oh we not fucking with him all right cool we not fucking with him it's like i don't know dog like i think it's worth the aren't conversation y'all, aren't y'all grown like that's what i mean it's like we can't sit down and talk or nah i just don't even like what you said in that interview that one time it's like <laughs> my god bro but when you explain why you felt like, like that I've, I've had, i understand i've had rappers like you know ask like yo so what was that situation or artists just in general what you know what was that situation about with that rapper why do you give a fuck, dog? Stop acting like these people are y'all's friends. It's like, can can we make it all super clear, right? Y'all are not friends with anyone in this industry. Mm-mm. Y'all are not friends with anyone in this industry. So don't ask about like, why are you beefing with this person? Why, yo, that's my, no, it's not your dog. It's not your brother. My like, brother. shut up, <laughs> shut up, shut up. No, it's not. So I'm not about to fake the funk just because you want to fake the funk so that you can like, move and navigate a little bit easier don't ask like it's crazy and to be honest you got someone like drake who has a song no friends in the industry right and that's drake someone who like you see pose up with this guy that if he if drake is telling you after uh, after all the pictures and the brother if he's saying there's no friends in the industry even his zane low shit i'm not friends with none of these guys i'm not i don't trust none of these it's like all right come on can we all just like call a spade a spade then like Mm -hmm. we're not friends we're like we work together every once in a while but like you're not my brother that's a family title you're not family you feel me so like cut the bullshit do any of those guys ever reach out to you just to be like yo man you're doing your thing keep doing your drake and those drake nah never no i've never talked to any of those three really no they've never reached out who are your i guess compadres in this game if any um me and Big Sean, we we've been talking. I feel like Big Sean kind of gets gets it. I get where he's at. Wale, um, Benny the Butchers, yeah. I mean, it's like you know, I don't really, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to. It's like a little bit too much Kanye in me where I'm like, I don't want to fake the funk. Yeah, that's why I'm I said I'm polishing that, my that, approach to be more hove like. Kanye definitely knows how to fake the funk. Yeah, but I'm saying like, yeah, that was a hard bar too. Yeah, because polishing my approach to be more hove like. Yeah, because like I understand that. All right, maybe if I fucking like chilled out and, and and played the game like shook hands, kiss babies. Oh, yo, my brother, what's going on? It's like, but I can't bring myself to do it. Sometimes, I'm just like, I don't fuck with y'all. Like, I wonder if there's even a game to play though, because I don't even think that gets you anywhere. I really see don't. now th- this is the conversation me and my boy were having. Imagine this. Imagine I walked into the game. I did kiss ass. I did shut up. I was quiet. I didn't offend anyone. I didn't ruffle feathers, and I still didn't get the approval in the industry looks. Then I'd be real pissed. Right. Imagine kissing ass and you still don't. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, shit. Which is 95% of all of these dudes. I and see that's it all why, the time. That's why they pop up at 30 
with the screenshot in the white font on the black screen like I'm done with this <laughs> it's cause yeah because y'all y'all were bent over for mm-hmm. eight years thinking that if I let them fuck me they'll love me mm-hmm. and they've been fucking you for eight years and they still don't like you damn Russ <laughs> It's the truth, though. It's a fact. I've seen it a million times. People that always want to be on the scene. You want to be at every party. Guarantee you that you beg somebody for tickets to go to Drake and Ye show last yeah. night. You backstage. Right. And nobody cares. At all. When's the last time you saw somebody on the front cover of a magazine and it made you want to check out their music? Never. Because by the time you get on the front cover of a magazine, I'm already... If, if, if I'm fucking with your music, I'm already fucking with it. Right. Like that, and if you're not fucking with it, that's not what's going to do it for not you. And that's the all. conversation we were having. And I had to check my ego where it's like artists or artists with egos, which is everyone, uh, have FOMO. So if I see, you know, excuse me, if I see awards, events, whatever it is, I might get FOMO of like, damn, I wish I was there. What can I do to get that? That's my ego trying to be like, you know, approved and recognized. But then when I really ask myself, I'm like, what does that mean? What is the, what is the famous girl walking outside of Nobu mean? What does the magazine cover really mean? Like, it doesn't mean anything. It just solidifies my ego, which that's the last thing I'm trying to do, to be honest. The ego just is trying to survive. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to live. <laughs> it's, a, it's actually a slight, slight turn off when I see everybody, when I see somebody doing everything except for the music. Yeah, bro. Yeah, so, I agree. Put out, drop some hard shit, press play. Now, I also understand, though, that perception is everything. It's, is it? I don't agree. It's, I, eh. I had this conversation with my youngest. I, I'm, I not, gonna say, I'm not going to say it's everything. I'll say this. That's why I said on Hustle Freestyle, biggest rapper without a cosign. If I was, if I was brought into the game like this, or if a Kanye went like this to me right now, or a Drake went, my music gets heard differently because it's like, oh, he said it's cool. Hmm. You listen to people's music differently if your friend says it's dope and mm-hmm. it's a trusted source. That's all a cosign is, is like, I trust Kanye's taste. If Kanye says it's dope, then it must be dope. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So it's like, I know, like, the fact that I've been able to be as successful as I am with fuck a cosign, uh, the opposite of a cosign. A lot of people in the industry, there was a time where it was just like, we don't fuck with you. <laughs> There's our cosign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we don't like you. We don't fuck with you. You're whack. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got Metro Boomin, the one of the biggest producers who I've never even met, posting something saying, Russ is whack. I'm not even talking about the music, just his spirit. 80,000 retweets. It's like, dog, what? When did he do that? I missed that one. That was like, that also started a whole, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's, people, that's what started the fuck Russ game? No, man. that just like, went. that added on to it. Like, and you know, Lil Pump saying, me and J. Cole, Cole cool now is fuck Russ. I remember 80, that. 80,000. It's like, what the fuck did I do to y'all? Shut the mm-hmm. fuck up. You know what I'm saying? Like, shut the fuck up. You're too grown. Like, not Lil Pump, but like, Metro, you're too grown to be doing weird shit like that. Did you, you never met him or had a conversation? I've never met him. Never had wow. a conversation. So I, I just look at shit like that and I'm like, you're a weirdo because at the end of the day, as a grown man who's in this shit and who understands that, look, we're all like up against obstacles of just even like self-doubt and trying to like tackle this industry and and we're already dealing with bullshit from the outside we're supposed to be on the same team Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're not supposed to be trying to like start uh mob mentality smear campaigns with our platform against another artist who we don't even fucking know what type of shit is that so you telling me that metro just tweeted fuck russ for russ is whack for no reason i think he i think it was because i mentioned how a lot of the production sounds the same these days Oh, okay, okay. And then so social media probably started adding yeah, but it's him like, and other producers. I think Metro's beats are hard. I'm just I was just making an observation. What's mm-hmm. the issue? Like I I I can say this, man. I've never used my platform to tear down another artist or producer in my life, and I never would. I use it to big people up, to be honest. It's like I guess I'm just more responsible with my platform. I don't use my shit to say hey i don't mobilize my army of fans to say hey fans we're not fucking with charlemagne the god Eighty thousand retweets i don't use my platform to tear someone down like y'all are just not raised how i was raised y'all are weird as fuck to be honest (laughs) y'all are weird as fuck no we do live in a strange area that's why even when you had a conversation about perception 
I was telling my youngins earlier this week, I'm like, yo, when you talk about, they was talking about people, right? And and I was like, what? Well, you got to define what you think is popping to me. Right. Because popping to me is what you do. And I tell right. you why. Because I see the numbers. Yeah. I see the money yeah. being made. If it's not translating into dollars, okay. what is popping? Is popping just your followers on social media? Right. Because you get posted on Shade Room and, you know, Hollywood Unlocked. Well, like, what so is popping? The, so is that your met- so metric is the money? Absolutely. I feel you. I'm not mad at that. It's a bit, you know, the metric is the, is the business working. Is your business fair. working? Is your business is, is your, your business that's working? That's fair. I agree. That's I agree. what that's that's what that's what I look at cuz that, that other stuff ain't business. That's just I agree. Frivolous bullshit. Theatrics. Yeah. I agree. Is your business, are you selling tickets? Are that's you, right. Yeah. Yes, that's what I said. I said can you sell our shows? Are you selling merch? Are mm-hmm. your albums selling? If the if the business is booming, that's popping to me. But see, I can't even like I can't even believe album sales anymore. That's why I said I restored hurdling, the reward worshiping, the points mm. of fabricated, they'd be scoreboard purchasing. It's like, I feel like I restored, uh, I restored the feeling of like, yo, we're not worshiping the rewards. Fuck the rewards. You feel me? Play for the love of the game. And why you can't even play for the points is because they bought the scoreboard. They're fabricating it anyway. I don't believe these streams anyway because the shit doesn't add up. Y'all be streaming out of this world and can't do a show that makes it make sense. Like, y'all do, so many artists do so many more streams than me, right? And I'll be like, damn, how are they doing these many streams? Like, damn. Da, 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 da. But then I go to Portugal and it's 13,000 people for my first time. I go to, you know, I do Staples Center by myself and I'm like, so then I'm like, all right. Well, if my streams equate to this ticket sale, then y'all's who is doing 10 times my streams, I'm not saying that maybe you should do the Rose Bowl, but you should at least be able to do what I'm doing. All right, all right. At least. Otherwise, where are these streams coming from? And then obviously, like, when you start to really peel back the layers and you learn about, you know, first name, last name of dudes who are running, you know, streaming farms for labels. And you're like, all right, so it is fake. It is fake. And it's not going to look fake to anyone. And not that, I don't expect fans to give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, at all. Fans are just here to, like, consume the music. But I will say, I think I think when it's all said and done, that's why I said on Golden, I'm on the right side of history. Like, <laughs> fuck it. I know my impact. I'm doing this shit for impact. So you can hire companies to fake your screens. Hell yeah! What? Yeah, I've heard people say that. I mean, I'm not. Hell in the, yeah. yeah! I'm not in the music business. Though. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! And you know, all these labels care about is market share. Mm-hmm. And market share, they don't look into where the streams came from. You know what I mean? Like, and it's it's just wild, bro. It's wild. It's the wild, wild west. And I get it. But uh, I think the only thing that bothers me why I bring up shit like that is that approval, that searching for approval that I need to stop doing. That the past like two weeks it dawned on me like. Man, I think my whole life I've been doing that. I and mean, like I fucking diagnosed myself on some therapy shit. I was like <laughs> I was like, man, I think it stems from being the new kid, moving around when I was a kid all the time. And what do you what, what's the mindset when you when you're the new kid at school? It's go and make friends. What does go and make friends look like? Trying to like audition, damn near. Yeah. And so I was doing that cuz we moved around so much. So hey, like, I heard you say on the album you was born in North Carolina. Yeah. I lived in North Carolina for 12 years. I did not know that. I heard that on the album. I was like, damn, I ain't no Russell. Ninth Carolina. Wonder didn't know that. Like, me and Ninth Wonder had a whole convo because, you know, like, he's from North Carolina and shit. And I was like, yeah, I lived in Winston-Salem for 12 years. I didn't know that. I'm from South Carolina. So that's why when I hear, whenever I hear Carolina, yeah. then records, it perks my ears up. I'm like, that's damn. What's, it's like, yeah. It's, you know, I did that life. I lived in Kentucky for a year. I moved back to North Carolina for a couple years. Then I moved to Georgia when I was in eighth grade going into high school. So it's like, I never, I never was one of those kids who even like, oh, I've known you since kindergarten. I was always thrown into this, you know, sort of like, I right, just make friends real quick. And I feel like maybe even in the industry, that's why it's like, I don't get attached to any sort of relationships I have in the industry because I know how, uh, I don't know. I just, like I said, it's from my childhood. Like, it, I feel like, if you move around a lot as a kid, you either hold on to relationships too much and try to cling on, 
or you understand that shit changes and can happen whenever and you don't really give a fuck. Ooh, interesting. You know, I go to, I do a lot of therapy, Russ. And it sounds I've been going to therapy too. Word? Yeah. When did you start I, going? During the pandemic? Like eight months ago. Yeah. I love it, man. I love it. But that approval thing, that shit I think stems from my childhood of trying to get approval from the new kids at school and then it translated into the industry where it's like I'm, yo, if I do this, will y'all fuck with me now? Will y'all fuck with me now? And it's like I fuck with me. Fuck y'all. Mm-hmm. I like that approach, but I think that maybe also you might um you might not allow yourself to get close to people because you're not gonna be around anyway. Oh, you, you know what I'm saying? Like that's you, true. You've been that's moving fun. around so much, so it's like you know I don't want to. I don't. I wanna... don't even need to go to therapy this no. week. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying like you may not allow yourself. I agree to get close to people. So therefore, you might just fix your mind to say fuck you because if you. Wow, I think anything else would, would would bring you closer to that person, and, and that's that avoiding avoidment attachment shit. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's real as fuck. Yeah, that's probably what it is. That's honestly, yeah. But and, the truth of the matter is, you really do want friends. I do. I, yeah. I, I what, like I well, Jesus Christ. You do. <laughs> no, it's like I want people to fuck with me, right? And I spent a lot of my time in this music business and in this career doing shit that I thought people would be like, okay, we fuck with you now. And it just left me confused, miserable, and and just not satisfied, you know? And I was like, you know what? That's why I'm doing Chomp too. I will make it a 14 song thing. I will put it out on a Wednesday. Cause I'm gonna play my, I'm gonna do what I want mm-hmm. without y'all in mind, you know? And I gotta move like that, bro. You created your own party, but are you letting people in, Russ? Yeah, man. Anyone who wants to come fuck with me, come on. But it's like, what were we just saying? Uh, you want friends? What, what were we? Because I had something to say. I said, I think you really want friends. I mean, but you said that though. You said you want people to fuck with you, which is basically saying, yes. Oh, oh, friends. oh, that's what I was gonna say. The thing with the music business, right? Mm-hmm. It's not sports. Sports, the whole world can hate you. You still get paid. You still like. You don't have to like Kevin Durant. As long as he's dropping 25, 7, and 4, whatever the fuck it is, Mm -hmm. a game, he has a job. Music is solely, solely based on jersey sales, if that's the equivalent. Like, the NBA, right? Jersey sales are indicative of who's popular, who do people like. Mm -hmm. The whole music business is run off of who do people like because it's music. It's not stat based it's do we like you or do we not like you so that's when all these vanity perception plays come into frame where you're like ooh, maybe if i get the cover of gq they'll fuck with me and why that even matters in music is because this like if people don't fuck with me then i don't have a career like music is solely based on do people like you or not you could be ill as fuck but if people don't like you then you have no fans yeah, you know, in radio days, they, they, they would always talk about, like, the Howard Stern effect, right? And Howard Stern was one of them people, if you hated him, yeah. you would listen. If you liked him, you would listen. They mm. even did studies that showed the people who hated him yeah. listen more. Wow. But think about it for somebody like you. I, I think it's kind of the same for somebody like you. I yeah. think people will listen to you just to say, fuck Russ. Yeah, I think so, too. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of power in that. There's a lot of power in that because I feel like, once again, I think... It's as you get older, I guess, you get a little bit more perspective of like, okay, it's not so just about me, you know? It's about like who I'm impacting. And that's what I've kind of, that's the role I've kind of settled into as Mm -hmm. I've gotten older is that, you know what? I need to stop trying to feed my ego and no, I need this look. I need to feed myself and I need to feed my niche. You know, Tyler Perry, like my boy Boogie's best friend, sent me this Tyler Perry interview, this clip. He's got a folder of just interview clips, like genius. We co-own Diamond together, so, you know, that's the whole thing with that. But send me this clip that Tyler Perry said. He said, um, Coca-Cola didn't change their formula just because people like Pepsi. And that shit just blew my mind. It's real. And it's like, it's the same thing. It's like, I'm going to just do me, you know? Because if I go chasing, yo, let me get the Metro Boomin' beat and put Future on it. Maybe then they'll fuck with me. No, we. you know what? 
Maybe they will, but your niche won't. Super serve your niche. Another mm -hmm. Tyler Perry quote, super serve your niche. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't have to get what's going on. We get what's, go what's, what's going on. This ecosystem is thriving. And as soon as I start dismissing the relevance, the impact, and the gravity of this ecosystem to chase that one that I don't have access to yet, that's when my greed and ambition starts fucking up my gratitude. Mm. You know mm. what I'm saying? Mm. I can't be constantly looking at what I don't have. Yeah, but I, I know I got these fans. Cool. Anyway, I want those fans. I want the... All right, cool. You go chase those fans. By the time you turn around and look back at your niche... They're gone. They're gone. As they say, if you don't appreciate what you got, God will take it away. We'll take it. So that's, right. that's why it's like, you know what, bro? I'm doing me. Whoever wants to fucking come and tune in, cool. But at the end of the day, I know... I've impacted people's mindset. And I always say the realest shit you can do in life, if you have a platform, is change the way people think. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Like, how do you honor these guys? You know what I mean? Like, if 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 a lot of these artists, if they were to die, not if, when they die, how do you honor them? What, what do you do to honor them? That's their legacy. With me, I know I've left something behind. Like, I know when I die, <sighs> man, people will really understand the impact. Cause I change people's lives mentally. You feel me? Like how people think about themselves is self-belief is confidence. It's, you know what? If they close the door on you, go in through the window. You know what I mean? Like it's, I impacted how people think. Mm -hmm. You can't fuck with that. You mentioned a couple of artists that I, I hope that you impact how they think. Big Sean and Wale. Man. I think either one of them could thrive independently. You know what I mean? Especially Wale. Wale always... I wish complains. I was closer with them because then I would send different voice memos. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, Well, what advice would you have for somebody like Wale? Because it seems like it's always a problem with his label or somebody. I've had those conversations with Wale and and I just think... I think Wale is great. I think Big Sean is great. I think for Wale and Big Sean to be still relevant, still dropping his, still, you know decade plus in the game dog mm -hmm. that's crazy people die to even get on for three days that's right y'all have been lit for 10 years like i look up to y'all you right. know y'all 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 are living longevity you know so my whole thing is like man it's tough when you're in the middle of the tornado <laughs> you know i'm on the outside of y'all's tornado like look trust me mm -hmm. it's easier to just make that call from the outside looking in but yeah, I mean, I would, I would just tell them, man, like, look, you don't need anything you're getting from the label. You can fund it yourself. And honestly, if it's like, well, the label puts up the money to go get radio. All right. Let's say, let's say a song like On Chill by Wale, mm -hmm. right? Let's, and let's say you want to work it at radio. Let's say it's 250 grand to like go all the way with it, right? That's how much it is, Eddie. <laughs> Let's say it's two. Like I'm, I'm on the high side of that. Let's yeah. say it's two fifty, right? Well, shit. I don't want to play with my own money. I don't want to play with my own money either. You feel me? But guess what? I like. Guess what? You can go do. Go get a line of credit. Like for me, right? Let me let me give some people some. Break that down. Okay, I'm about, I'm about, I'm about to tell y'all exactly what's going on, right? I don't want to play with my own money. Even though in advance, they give you a million dollars, et cetera, et cetera, and they spend money at radio, that still ends up being your money, right? Even a line of credit. I go get 500000 from a bank and I use it. I got to now pay monthly. It's still my money at the end of the day, but it's about time value of money. It's about cash flow. It's about peace of mind, right? And it's about going into your pockets. I'll go into the pockets of the bank, right? So with Chomp 2, I was like, I could fund this. I have millions of dollars in the bank. I could fund it myself. Why? Yo, bank. Give me my line of credit. All right, cool. Here's half a million dollars. Say less. And guess what? Fund the whole Chomp 2 thing. I just bought the billboard in Times Square for an hour was 60 grand. Boom, right? Everything on Chomp 2, I'm using the line of credit. And then I pay $1,000 a month. Come on, I can pay $1,000 a month for the rest of my life. I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? So there's alternatives. Like if if wow. the if okay. the if the issue is upfront cash, well, I need that 250 to actually get the radio, dog. Y'all are lit. 
go show a bank, like have your business manager send the statements and shit, a bank will give y'all millions of dollars in line of credit. If It's a way better rate too. You feel me? All the, That's what I'm saying. A label is a bank with shitty rates. If that's all you need is money to move, come on, bro. There's, there's, there's way smarter ways to do it. So once you know the radio people, you know the guy at Urban Radio, you know Greg Johnson, you know, you know what I'm saying? And if you've been in this game, if you've been at the labels, you've been behind the scenes, and you haven't at least stolen the contacts of radio, <laughs> then you're bugging. So Chomp 2 was funded by a line of credit. Hell yeah. Which was, which is and will be funded by me because the line of credit is off the strength of my financial situation. Word. And then I pay it back every month. But it's like, so it's an advance. Mm-hmm. I'm not recouped on the line of credit. You know what I'm saying? It's like, but it's a way better rate. I'm pay- And I could have paid for the whole shit out of pocket. Why would I do that? Mm-hmm. This is America. 100%. <laughs> the, the land of debt, baby. Why? Is it like, and it's not, it, I don't even look at it. It's not even it's, debt. It's not bad debt. It's not debt yeah. when I could pay it off right now if I wanted. Yeah. Why would I give you $500,000 right now if I could give you $1,000 every month? You know, I'll pay enough to like knock down the principal so I don't end up actually spending six hundred grand on a $500,000 loan. But it's like, why would I give you five hundred thousand right now? Time value of money. I can use the five hundred thousand I was going to give you right now, invest it into some real estate, invest it into some crypto, and guess what? I can just throw you this little two grand thousand dollars a month for the next however long. And in the meantime, I ran up five hundred k out of my own pocket mm-hmm. investing over here. So if it's money y'all are after, go to a bank. Go to a bank. And like I said, the connection element, y'all should have been had those contacts now. You know what I mean? Like, dog, come on, man. There's alternative ways to win. Yeah, I I mean, I don't know shit about any of that. It sounds like great game, though. You know what I mean? I'm telling like, you, it is. Yeah, 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 it yeah. is. It is. It's time value of money. Do you want $1,000 a week right now, or do you want, for the rest of your life, or do you want $100 million right now? Mm-hmm. The people who take $1,000 a week don't understand the time value of money. Give me the 500 million right now because by the time the person who's taking a thousand a week gets it to 500 million or whatever the fuck it is, 100 million, I would have made my 100 million turn into a billion. Mm-hmm. And you're still sitting there waiting on, you know, a hundred thousand dollar check because it's a hundred weeks in. It's like, it's time value money. It's what you can do with the money right now. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Do you think you're still underrated in mm-hmm. hip hop? And, and, and why and, do you care? I'm, you know what? I had this like I had this other epiphany in the shower. I feel like the shower would be have, mm-hmm. like I don't know what it is. The water You're getting cleansed. Mm-hmm. It's, like, it's like being in the ocean. Yeah. It's literally the same thing. Yeah, if the water's warm enough, it's like the womb. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean, like mm-hmm. you're just it's a new life. It's I wasn't the same guy I was five minutes ago before this shower. <laughs> don't hold me to anything I said before this shower. Um, no, nah, I had this epiphany where I was like. I think if the world gave me what I'm after, which is have Russ in the conversation, I want, I want, put me in that convo, right? Top 10, top five, give me that shit, right? I think my soul is scared that if I get that, then where's the drive? Yeah. So maybe the price of this life is a tormented soul, but for a good reason. Because look, look Russ, speaking from the universe of God's perspective, if we give you everything you want, you're not gonna want anything else. And you'll stop going. I'm not gonna give you this, probably until you're dead, so that you can still be ambitious. If I have nothing that I'm working towards, then you die, you decay, your spirit is over with. I still, I need something to go after. You said something if, I, if, if I'm If I'm the consensus number one, mm-hmm. everyone's like, Russ is the best rapper alive ever. Russ has the most Grammys ever. Russ has the most... If I'm the consensus number one, there's no chip on my shoulder anymore. Where's the chip? You know? Conway said on... on, on I think it was on my shit or maybe it was on his own song. I think it was on Distance... I took the chip off my shoulder and used it as a stepping stone. Did I say that? I don't know. I think he said that. (laughs) 
Someone said that, and I it, it's real. It's like, but if there's no chip, then you're not progressing. For me, I need to be driven by something, and it's the love of the game. But at the same time, it's also the element of people are booing me in the stands, and I'm about to drop fifty on y'all. Mm-hmm. What happens when everyone's cheering for you? Like I think about that from a Kendrick Lamar perspective. I'm like, damn, it's got to be interesting to be Kendrick because you're the consensus like hip hop savior. Yeah, it's weird though because Kendrick, it's, it's almost like out of sight, out of mind with Kendrick. Like, I, if you ask me. My favorite rappers over the past decade has been Kendrick Lamar and Rhapsody, right? Yeah, hard. And hard. I think Kendrick is the leader of the new school. I don't think, I don't look for Kendrick to drop every year. But that's I don't what I'm need saying, that. But it's like, if you're Kendrick, right? And it's like this consensus sort of like, you're the GOAT. But then now you see them comparing people to Kendrick. Like, and I, like I, I saw my man Duval compare like Kodak Black to Kendrick. And I'll see other, they'll, they'll bring other people in the that's conversation. Insane. But it's only because Kendrick hasn't been around for so long. But do you see, like, now I could see that that might be a new driving force. If you're LeBron and you're on year 18 or whatever, and some new kid comes in the league and they think that they can, like, he can fuck with you, mm-hmm. maybe that brings you out of, all right, I'm about to fuck y'all up. Y'all must have forgot. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, for the most part, you're probably on cruise control, I would think, where it's like, all right, well, yep, I came into this shit to be the best. Y'all called me the best. I got a Nobel Peace Prize. I'm about to chill. <laughs> That, that, like I, I still feel like I gotta prove something mm-hmm. now, but I also love the game, right? And I also j- the sport of rapping and making songs. But I I ask myself if the recognition, respect, notoriety, and that whole thing was there, would I be going this hard? And I don't know if I would be. Mm. I think I would still be making music every day. I just don't know if I would be so pressed to. I gotta put it out right now that, you know, if I was mm. in that space where. Dog, we think you're the greatest. Chill. I still feel That's like every every year I'm Lil Wayne 07 having to go on a run to let y'all know I'm the best. Mm-hmm. But what happens when they say you're the best? That's a great question. I, 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 would, I would probably have to ask Drake that. Yeah, what happens when they say you're the best? See, Drake still, Drake still has the chip because people are not going to give people. I feel like he has a chip because people don't want to give him best rapper ever type of shit yeah. people the don't want it yeah the ghostwriting shit like yeah. so i like that drake still raps with a chip on his shoulder mm-hmm. but he might be tormented deep down because it's like damn it doesn't matter what i do some of y'all will never give me this shit mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know y'all are so quick to give it to kendrick some of y'all will never get I, I can imagine but i can only imagine but um yeah it's like i feel like i especially with something like rap there's gotta be a there almost has to be this, uh, is it an antagonist? There has to be like something, some sort of force of resistance, whether it's perception or whatever it is, that also sprinkles in to your own love of the game. There's got to be There's got to be something. Nah, I'm going to show them. Watch, I'm going to drop 50 on Michael Jordan tonight. There's got to be, there's got to, you got to be headhunting to a certain degree. I think you said something earlier that makes a lot of sense. Like your motivation motivates others. Yes. So if you ever got to that point, you wouldn't be motivated. So who would you be motivating? Right. So you're right. God, you may not get that. I, until I'm dead. Yeah, and then yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. and that's really what it is. That's like why death is a celebration of life. And I've like had those talks with myself. Where I'm like, you know what, bro? I really, might, I don't want to speak into the air, but it's like, I don't think I'll ever get it until I'm dead. And especially, I had this line I was writing where I said, um, you know, life is beautiful, but we know men only get flowers at funerals. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's like, I don't expect to get my flowers until I'm dead anyway. You feel me? So, and I think that it's it's probably in my best interest. I could think that, you know, as 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 men, when I say men, I just mean like the human race. We We think that we have all the answers and we know when things are supposed to happen. It's like, you know what? It's probably in my best interest while I am here on earth to not get everything I want. Hold back a little bit, God. <laughs> I don't want God to hold back nothing. I don't, I don't want, get, I want it all. I, I, I don't want him to hold back anything, but in this situation, I understand the perspective mm-hmm. of the universe where it's like, listen, we'll give you everything else. And when you're dead, you'll finally get your roses and your flowers. And Because if, look... Even Jay-Z, right? People know Jay-Z's the GOAT. Mm-hmm. When Jay-Z dies, it will be so much more clear 
because you just don't you don't appreciate what you have till it's gone. We don't appreciate artists until they're gone. It's it's just how it is with anything. Oh, you know, you had a fucking I had a pet guinea pig for two weeks when I was like twelve, and my mom like got rid of her, uh, the guinea pig, gave it to someone else. I didn't even notice the guinea pig was gone until like a week later. And I was like, I have, where did you do my get it? She was like, you didn't even like this thing. You didn't even notice it was gone. And it's like, it's like, man, we don't appreciate shit until we just don't have it. We just want to hoard shit. And, and we get so comfortable with uh, our cars, our life, our mom, our dad, our family. All right, cool. To the point that your dad, like I, I realize this with my own self. Like I feel bad. Like when my dad calls and I don't pick it up, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, yo, this that could be the last moment. Who knows? That's real. That's real. And I feel guilty, but then like my emotions come into play and my energy comes into play, where it's like I know what he's about to be talking about, and I don't want to deal with that right now. How nice for you. You don't want to deal with that right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you're protecting your boundaries, though. So I'm not I mad ain't, at that. I'm not mad at it either until. Until he's passed away, and then what? How real were those fucking boundaries, dog? You listen to your energy, though. I mean, I, I get it. I do, but th- there's really no way to win that. You know what I'm saying? You either choose to suffer right now, or you choose to suffer later on, I feel like. Because it's like... I think you win it by doing exactly what you're doing with your music, by doing you. Yeah, yeah. Like, honestly, you gotta. those are your boundaries. If you don't feel like it in that moment... And guess what? You just got to deal with whatever comes with that later. Well, that's what I'm saying. You got to really have those conscious thoughts of acceptance of like, you know what? If that was his last phone call to me, am I okay with, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think about shit like that, man. Because I'm, I, I, like I said, I think it's getting older, but it's like, man, like. That's the people pleaser in you too. Yeah. And you drive yourself crazy doing that Bro, shit. Bro, I just started learning how to say no. Like, you know what? No, I don't want to do that. It's a complete sentence. It's. And I feel bad because I'm like, I'm such a dickhead. Just like, nah, I don't want to do that. Why doesn't Russ want to do it? He just doesn't want to do that. It's like, damn. They're probably... And then I feel... Because once again, here's the here's the vicious combination I deal with. Wanting to people please, right? Knowing I need to say no, but wanting to get approval. If I say no, they really won't fuck with me. If I say yes to everything, maybe they'll fuck with me. But will I fuck with me? <laughs> <laughs> you do realize that's all of us, though. All of us deal with that shit. Like, yeah. we're human beings. Like, everything yeah. you just described is a natural human emotion. And you just got to get comfortable with, you know. Yeah. And yeah. And and that's a no. And when somebody says, why? Because I don't want to. That's Simple. A, a perfectly fine explanation. Yeah. Simple. I, it's like, I just, man, because I'm my mom's kid, too, where she, like, you know, internalizes everyone else's emotion and she's an empath and That's right. runs bars and reads people's energy. She's in that world, you know, and I'm just like, I can tell when I've let someone down and I hate that. I hate that too, but... So that sometimes I'm just like, you know what? I'll I'll make y'all feel good. At, that's why I said on the premiere shit, I used to light myself on fire just to keep you warm. You warm, warm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, because shit, at least you're warm. Well, what I'm about letting warm. yourself down? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I be letting myself down for the past life, you feel me? But shit, everyone around me is lit. You know what I'm saying? Everyone around me is warm. And if I'm on fire, so be it. And I feel like I, I if I feel like, no, I know it's not good. Because you can't pour from an empty cup. Yeah. I feel like my cup is, it refills itself constantly. And I have like this one thing I'm super proud of about myself is that regardless of what's ever happened, regardless of anything, I wake up and feel like my cup is overflowing. That's right. Regardless, you know? And I feel like that's why I give so much, you know? So it is what it is. My cup has some holes in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> water's leaking going, out. You going to therapy to fill, fix those holes, though? Yes, sir, man. Come on. Got a session next week, I think. My guy Russ Chomp Two is out right now. Uh, always appreciate the conversation, my yeah, brother. Yeah, man. This is like it's. I, I like the fact that your energy and whenever we talk, it's very just open. You know, like you're not. Despite what people say, but you're not a judgmental person, really. No, <laughs> I don't have no. I don't have no place to be judgmental. though. I'm yeah. trying to fix my own shit. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know I, mean? I don't got time. Or I'm just to curious. Judge I mean, I'm curious about people. I like having conversations with interesting people. You're and- honest, and you and, and you and what you see is what you get. And I appreciate just like 
it's a peaceful environment. I appreciate that, Russ. Yeah. Chomp Two is out right right now. Yes, it's sir. Russ. It's, it's, it's the Breakfast Club. 